Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray. And today I am joined, as always, by my fantastic co hosts, Ricardo Martinez and Jerry. Uh, and today we are blessed to be joined uh, by Brittany Laughlin, uh, Executive Director of the Stacks Foundation team. Um, so, Brittany, how's it going today? It's going pretty good. <laughs> good morning. Fantastic. <laughs> and evening and afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to have you here. So question to get us going, Brittany. Um, Stax originates from 2013 um, and has its own origin story. But what is your Stax story? How did you end up getting involved in this? Uh, where did you come from? What's the, uh, the origin story of your, of your you know, uh, character in this movie? Yeah. Oh, great okay. question. Um, yeah, it's it's almost as old as the block stack story itself. So I was on the venture capital side. I was at Union Square Ventures, um, and we were looking at at the time at something called Bitcoin Tech in 2013. And we, I remember, we had this day in San Francisco where we had like 10 different Bitcoin tech companies pitch us, and like most of them were like true anarchists and like wanting to like take down <laughs> big governments and stuff. Um, so a lot of those, uh, a lot of those pitches we realized weren't very fundable from like a big VC perspective. Um, but we did have a meeting with, um, this team, Brian and Fred, who at the time were pitching this Bitcoin wallet called Coinbase. And so that, uh, meeting we're like, wow, they, you know, they're really compelling. They're backable. You know, they understand that like regulation is going to play a role in like having to work with, you know, getting the right licenses and stuff. So, um, yeah, so we invested in Coinbase back then and that started my crypto journey because I started learning about Bitcoin. You know, I kind of bought like a modest amount, like back when it was $200 and, I uh, was like, oh, yeah, this is cool. I'll just kind of keep this. But at the time, it had a, a big reputation for things around like Silk Road and kind of this, you know, black, uh, you know, black markets and dark web and all that. So um, we kind of were like, OK, well, what's what comes after just money? Because like money is interesting, but um, there has to be like non-financial applications of the blockchain. Um, and so we were looking for that. And through that thesis, we actually found Maneev and Ryan, who were starting this project at the time, was called One Name which is now Stacks today. So we really like their vision of like bringing more utility to chains um, like Bitcoin. And so uh, we invested in 2014. I sort of followed the team as an investor um, for a number of years before uh, 2019. Uh, so it's almost three years actually to the day that I, I went full-time working uh, for Stacks. So first I worked for what's now Hero Systems helping them with their Reg A Plus offering. And then uh, about a year and a half ago, um, spun out to kind of launch the Stacks Foundation. So the mission really about education, providing grants, uh, funding infrastructure, all of these key pieces in the ecosystem. Um, so yeah, it's been kind of three years full-time, but prior to that, um, I've known the team since 2014 and just been incredibly impressed by their diligence, their vision and their pursuit of like, we're going to do things the right way. We're going to do things <laughs> the hard way, but we're not going to kind of just like try and launch it and like, and then like abandon it or just make a bunch of money and leave or something like that, which having been in the industry so long, there are a lot of people that kind of had that mission and maybe they achieved it or not, but it's been nice to be with a project for seven going on eight years now. That's uh, that's pretty cool. It's, uh, it's interesting that it's been this kind of like uh, the way you got into crypto or uh, Bitcoin is via uh, via kind of the business side of things, I suppose, because it's say as you say, it was through like getting to understand Coinbase, and then that is what uh, got you into it, just which is kind of cool. I guess before I ask you to explain uh, to our listeners what Stacks is, question first is like, hey, so you got where well, you were obviously watching from the investment side. What made you decide to get involved full time three years ago uh, to the day? What was it that, that got you to do that and, and actually take that step into you know? boom, I'm going, you know, to, to work with them. Yeah. Well, like at the time, you know, being on the investor side, we're like looking for people building new things. And um, at USV, especially, we always try to take this approach of like, what future do you want to live in? And then how do we fund the things today that we want to be part of our future? So, you know, if we want this like more open internet, we want people to compete with Google and Facebook and not like every big tech just gets sucked of these big, like controlling monoliths. It was like, okay, we need to fund things that are helping builders. 
um, compete or like just provide a different opportunity that doesn't exist yet. Uh, but what I found is like investing even in like 2017, the ICO boom, there was just so much money and it was being thrown at like a lot of questionable <laughs> projects and things like that. And there wasn't a, enough people like building real things. And so it was kind of like, well, if I want this future to exist, I think it might be too early to even think about investing. Um, instead, thinking about like, where can I bring skills to like support talent? And so it was like, I don't want to raise a crypto fund and just sit on the sidelines and kind of be like, oh, here's some money, here's some money. There are plenty of other people doing that. But it was like, okay, how can I like actually move the needle on something? And I was, you know, I built two companies before I was on the venture capital side. So like, I'm an operator at heart. And so I was like, okay, I want to do something that is hard and challenging and work with smart people who are thinking about the world the way I am. And let me find that. So, um, you know, a few months, I kind of worked with a few projects, got to kind of be like a fly on the wall with, um, you know, learning from a bunch of different crypto projects. And Stacks just like kept coming up as this really interesting place to build because of their focus on building on Bitcoin because they wanted to take this regulated route, which was very contrarian <laughs> at the time. Um, and because like, I think my skill set was like a good fit for what they needed, which was like, okay, they, we were gonna go talk um, to investors and try and educate them about the technology, um, help you know, retail investors understand what the technology was because we actually did like a regulated offering. We got qualified by the SEC so we could offer it to US people. So that was like pretty revolutionary at the time. Um, yeah, so it kind of was like a, a mix of things, but I was like, if I really care about this industry, I need to like be investing with my time, not just my money. That's uh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. So it kind of like uh, definitely comes to this idea that um, you kind of wanted more of a, yeah, more of like a direct involvement. So it's like, hey, I'm really interested in this. I would like to actually make a very like uh, on the ground difference to where the market's going, how things are going and kind of see it move forward uh, myself, which is kind of cool. Okay. Um, well, I guess now that sets me up perfectly for the next question. Um, and, and then I promise I'll, I'll let Ricardo and Jerry ask questions. I just wanted to ask this one, which is uh, for everyone out there listening, um, what is Stacks? And yeah. what is it all about? So Stacks is a blockchain. <laughs> um, and it's, you know, the goal is to be able to bring more utility to Bitcoin. So we actually reuse the hash power of Bitcoin. So we don't need like brand new, um, you know, miners using a lot of electricity. Instead, our miners take Bitcoin, they spend it in order to mine new Stacks blocks. So it is proof of work, but it's a little bit different. Um, so it's called proof of transfer. And like, that's important because some of the key aspects of Stacks tie into why that consensus is there. So one, the goal is to reuse the security of Bitcoin. So we don't need to worry about like big um, security hacks in terms of like hash power, because we already are using the most secure chain. Um, two, right now, Bitcoin does not actually do that much. It's actually really hard to, to um, run something like a smart contract. We see these in Ethereum and other networks, but Bitcoin doesn't have that ability. So with Stacks, it actually enables, you know, running your smart contract through the Stacks blockchain, but then the finality is always on the Bitcoin chain. So what's great about that is that it means that you can scale and you're not going to slow down the Bitcoin chain, but that ultimate settlement is in the Bitcoin chain. So people like that. Um, and the third is that uh, we have something in our consensus uh, called stacking. So all of those miners who are taking Bitcoin and spending them to mine new stacks blocks, some of that Bitcoin gets burned, it like gets completely destroyed. Um, and some of it gets redistributed back to people who are holding their tokens and stacking. So if you have stacks, you can commit to locking them for two week cycle and you get like a small Bitcoin reward for that. Right now it's currently like a 10% yield in Bitcoin for holding your stacks. And what's great about that is that it opens up these new interesting things that people are building on top. Like people are thinking about NFTs that earn yield because they're built on stacks and this Bitcoin yield is part of the chain. Um, people have built things like city coins which is like the city of Miami has a wallet and some of those Bitcoin rewards get redirected to a wallet for the city of Miami. So that um, they've been able to actually give to the city of Miami. Miami's mayor has accepted it. They're using it to pay for some low income housing. There's some really interesting things because you get a yield for participating in the chain in this certain way. 
So that's like a little in the details, but the high level is you can think of it as a smart contract platform, similar to an Ethereum, but really leveraging the power of Bitcoin and extending the utility of it. Oh, thanks. That's, uh, that's awesome. So I guess it's like, um, it's not a layer two specifically because like, like Lightning Network, uh, and I guess it's, it's not really a side chain like Liquid, I don't think. It's more like its own chain that uses the sort of the security of Bitcoin and stability and et cetera, et cetera to then do other things. But obviously it's like kind of reliant on Bitcoin, but obviously it's its own thing at the same time. I guess I'm yeah, yeah. Right. Some people are oh, like, Bitcoin. oh, is this a layer two? Is it what? It's like we're like it's a layer one point five. <laughs> so gotcha. um, yeah, I think there's like just some outdated information. On, like, like why do we even care if it's layer one or layer two? But yeah, it's not like lightning where it's you know sort of side chains. But um, oh. you know, I think we're in the same mindset as things like uh, lightning, where it's like we want it to be as decentralized as possible. We want people to be able to extend the utility of Bitcoin and unlock some of the value that's currently in Bitcoin without giving up custody of their Bitcoin. So there's some new interesting products that have launched where it's like you can keep your Bitcoin on chain, but you can use it in things like lending, um, which wasn't possible before without stacks. It, when you guys are piggybacking off the security of Bitcoin, is it being merge mined by like Bitcoin miners? Is, is that how it's? No, being- so it's not being uh, merge mined. It actually creates a transaction in the in the Bitcoin chain. So it's just submitted there. And so you would need to like hack the Bitcoin chain in order to rewrite rewrite any of the old stacks transactions. So like the state of the stacks chain is getting written into the Bitcoin chain. But yeah, I, you know, I'm, um, we have a number of great computer scientists. Uh, if you wanna go to the details of merge mining, I think there's actually a blog post cause that question comes up a lot <laughs> about it. Um, for me, I'm like, okay, it's not merge mining but um, I'm, I'm probably less able to go into the deep specifics of that. How, how oh. is Stacks similar or different to um, other projects like RSK that are kind of trying to add utility to Bitcoin also? So the goal is um, to be as decentralized as possible. So, you know, being able to have independent miners who are mining instead of having um, things like more centralized like nodes or a centralized party who's kind of verifying that the information is correct. So the fact that like there are independent miners who are using just Bitcoin um, as part of the mining is a key piece of that. So, you know, I think there's anywhere from like 10 to 30 like miners, but it's completely open. Anyone can come in and mine. You don't need any special hardware. Like you could literally mine from your normal computer. You just have to have Bitcoin in order to participate. So it does make it very easy for people to participate. Um, obviously, if you want to be like incredibly profitable, like you probably want to have some know-how on how to uh, understand like what what type of miner you're running. But we do have some open source miners like in our GitHub. If you wanted to try out, you could. And so I think the fact that it is so easy also is for the preference of it being more decentralized. And anyone can run a node as well. Like we have like a bunch of our team members run nodes, um, but anyone can run a node so that they can pull any data from the chain. Um, I feel like from a Bitcoin perspective, it's, you know, Stacks is very interesting, but there's this nagging feeling that I have that makes it feel, kind of feel like, um, I, I remember um, Ricardo did mention RSK and I feel like it's, I kind of see Stacks, forgive me, but I kind of see Stacks like a niche product for um, very specific people within Bitcoin and not really, you know, mainstream like the way, you know, remember you say you tried to, because, ob- you know, obviously, apparently you are, you know, actually competing for market share with um, other smart contracts platforms like Ethereum and the rest of them. So mm-hmm. how do you think, you know, um, has there been any validation for Stacks? Because I've seen some people, you know, just say, uh, um, people, I, I've seen arguments where people say that, you know, Stacks is trying to, you know, create smart contracts and smart contracts are not actually needed, you know, within the Bitcoin ecosystem as, you know, statement, um, narratives like that. So how do you, what, what, you know, drives, you know, the stacks, you know, equals what drives, you know, to continue pushing on? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I believe that like smart contracts are really interesting primitive that can be used in incredible ways. And there are, of course, multiple platforms that allow you to do that. But the real belief is that there's a ton of value and utility that Bitcoin provides that is not currently accessible. Right now, like if you wanted to use um, any of the Bitcoin value you hold, or any of the places where Bitcoin is easily accessible or used on Ethereum, you would have to wrap it 
in order to utilize it in different places. And you know that usually means trusting a custodian or it could be in like a bridge and there's nothing native to actual Bitcoin. But when you think about the size and the scale of the market cap on Bitcoin, the fact that none of that gets to actually play in this whole smart contracts ecosystem seems like kind of like a miss. Like, you know, right now the Ethereum, like all of the value built on top of Ethereum is at the equivalent of the market cap of Ethereum. For Bitcoin, it's maybe like, you know, 5% of the value of what's built on top of Bitcoin relative to the value of Bitcoin. And to me, that, that's kind of like a missing piece. I think that one, Bitcoin is more ubiquitous, it's more secure, it's accepted everywhere. That whole payments layer, the fact that it's disconnected from any other type of more advanced transaction is kind of the missing piece. So, you know, whether it's Stacks or whether it's all these other chains, I think you're gonna see a lot more development on Bitcoin. And for me, I think that Stacks has taken this approach that we wanna make it secure. We want to expand the utility of this ecosystem. We're still very early, even though, you know, Ethereum has like a huge market share on smart contracts. I think we're barely scratching the surface of the amount of smart contracts that will exist and the amount of value and utility that they will have going forward. So kind of in my seven year perspective, it's like, it still feels really early. Nobody's won this race yet. I think there will be multiple chains that support value and it really comes down to what you're looking for. And Bitcoin being the most ubiquitous, the most secure, the highest value seems like an incredibly like opportunistic place to be building. Aside from smart contracts, Stacks allows people to issue tokens, uh, correct? Um, yeah, so you would be able to build just like Ethereum, you know, there's similar primitives. So if you wanted to issue a token, you can do so through things we have called app chains. Um, there's also proof of transfer light. And so that's how city coins um, launch. So like Miami coin, New York city coin, those projects, um, they basically use a similar model of proof of transfer. So miners burn stacks tokens instead of burning Bitcoin. Um, those stacks tokens that get uh, 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 burned, get redistributed, or they um, miners get back like Miami coin. So it's just basically all done in pre-mine. So uh, city coins, you know, they didn't do it like a pre-sale instead they just did a pre-mine. So like there's some interesting things being experimented on um, as well as some new tools like Alex, which helps uh, new tokens launch on top of stacks as well. So our smart contracts have been live for just over a year. So it was like January uh, last year that we kind of launched those smart contracts, even though we were in development for a long time. Um, so we're seeing a lot of that utility get added recently. Is, is Stacks using Solidity or, or some other uh, smart contracting language? Yeah, so it, um, we wrote our own smart contract language. It's called Clarity. It's also used by Algorand. And there's a few other projects I think that have looked into using it as well. Um, you know, I think this is maybe the big hurdle for anyone who's built in the Ethereum ecosystem before, you know, they would have to switch to writing in Clarity. Um, if you're familiar with like Rust programming languages, it's pretty similar. The benefit is like there's finality, you can run tests on it, it's very readable. So if you, you know, I would encourage all of you to go check out um, like our Explorer, you can see some of the transactions, you can read the smart contracts, um, directly. And even if you're not like an advanced programmer, you can very easily understand what's happening in the contract. So that's like a key part. Yeah. The language sounds like a, a plus to me, because I guess the, the more simple, the, uh, the less scams and DAO hacks and whatever else you get coming with it, which happens a yeah. lot in the Ethereum world. Um, <laughs> well, so. even back to like, you know, the, the hack, the hack, or it wasn't even a hack a long time ago. It was a mistake that an engineer made and like ended up locking a ton of ETH. It was just like, there was no way to run a test on that before putting in production. And like, that's how Solidity is designed. And, you know, some people are like, oh, well then you can do anything you want with it, which is a good thing, but I think can also be a bad thing because when you're dealing with a lot of value, uh, it can be really risky if you don't have a way to run um, it natively to understand like what's gonna be the impact. And so that's like a big benefit of Clarity. Um, and, you know, at the foundation, we focus on education. So we have Clarity University, it's uh, our free learning. So if you want to like dabble with Clarity, we have all the documentation, we have these like cohorts where you can learn, um, we try and make it, you know, super easy so people can just like dabble with it or, or, you know, build something with it. Mm -hmm.